my brothers. Uh, a little bit busier of a day today, so rather than be all the way out in the woods, I just kind of came down to the lake. And today I'm going to bring you guys the Condor K-Tac Kukri designed by Alan K, the season one, I believe it was, uh, winner of the series alone. Um, I have only watched uh, season eight myself, but I'm familiar with his after watching a little bit of the show and studying the Kukri. Now this Kukri is designed as a tactical Kukri. It's a little bit smaller in size than your traditional one, but nevertheless, it is very lethal out here in the wood line and uh, it does a great job and it comes with a killer sheath, man. Now all the sheaths that are out there, I've got real kukris from Nepal as well. And this is a super nice Kai deck sheath. I absolutely love the color of it. It does come with a dangler. You can mount it to your backpack. It clicks in snug and very well. The fit on it is great, has a top buckle. Now it's not going anywhere. And again, you do have that dangler option on there. So one thing that's unique about the kukri's bite is as it hits, it slides in and that's kind of what gives it that weight behind the blade causing slices it bites very very deep very very easily and it bites a wide gap at a time too as you guys can see how much contact area you can get on there and you know you could even debark very easily large sections so if i prop this up here you can two hand And now it's a tool for debarking. So as y'all can see on this very seasoned wood here, I mean, it just, look how dink, uh, deep it will sink. I mean, it gets sharp. It is a convex blade, but I mean, it just buries itself in there. And I mean, this thing is a hacker's delight. It really is. And it just keeps on going. There is not much to stop it. So it chews through stuff and takes out large gashes very, very easily. That same debarking is what also gives it an edge for feather sticking. You can slice as thinly as you need to. And you just keep on going back and just choose and choose, man. Choose and choose. I'm not in my element today. I'm down at the beach. There's a lot of people around me, but that's okay. So as you guys can see, it's just biting and biting. And you can create it as thin as you'd like. The most wonderful thing about this blade design is its chopping capabilities. You start up here and as it lops, it naturally sinks in to the wood or meat or whatever it is your hitting object, if you will, for you. So it creates a natural slicing mechanism as you bring the blade down onto its intended target, man. And it looks really cool. It's a super nice design. It's about a uh, little bit less than a quarter of an inch thick. I'll put some specs in here kind of like I usually do over all the generals um, and we can talk more about that. I believe this one is a 1095 steel um, and you can put a patina on there. There's a little bit of a natural coating on it already. Some kind of very fine gray powder coat. It's very, very thin though. The handle is micarta. It's got hollow pins with a big basher down there. And it looks like that this is actually welded into the handle. So it's very, very sturdy. If you want to throw it up against a tree, you can and it probably won't split apart like some of your other ones will. So, my brothers, I'm going to do my best to show you how well this thing can debark. It works as a two-handed tool as well as the one-handed tool. And as you peel back, it just naturally grabs all the bark and takes it back, kind of like when you feather. Let me turn y'all around so y'all can see. All right, guys, so I'm doing my very best here to uh, demonstrate this for you guys. I've got a piece of wood and a phone and everything else rocking against me, so bear with me as I try to get this formula down right, how I can do this to demonstrate this debarking. Oh yeah, and then it's all just a matter of angle, so I kind of went a little deep on that one, but you can work it back and forth like so. We'll get that one off of there like that, and we'll come back to it. You just take off big chunks like that, and it's fun too. I mean, it's just it's just kind of cool to be able to do that. Grab it. Side. 
And I'm just being kind of ginger about it. That one was a little big. But my preferred method for feather sticking out is to just do it like that. Okay, so as you guys can see, we have quite the firewood selection here. We're going to process all of it with the kukri. Another big old split piece in there. Okay, so let's take a look at some quick specs here. If we're gonna pull a full length on there, you're gonna be at 16 inches or straight across, you're at 15 inches on the K-Tac, okay? Your actual blade is 10 inches long in length. The cutting edge of it is about nine inches long, all right? Right here to here. So as you can see, it's a pretty sharp recurve. Looking at it, Next to the Nepalese Kukri, the EGKH, as you guys can see, a little bit more aggressive in the recurve on the K-Tac. Uh, also, um, look at the handles on there. So it swooped down to keep that from sliding out of your hand. The thickness is pretty is pretty big difference, all right? Thickness on the uh, EGKH, 8.2 millimeters. five, six millimeters on there. All right, so still plenty thick for by standards. Um, this thing is, I'm sure, it'd be hard to say what could outperform what. I mean, this thing is a freaking leaf spring, bro. This thing is a huge hunk of metal. This thing is just nimble, aggressive, and I mean, it can do anything that you need it to do. So my brother's, <laughs> you see what Bismarck's doing. There's a lot of cheap kukris out there. Um, there's actually a lot of different kukris and everything. But, uh, you know, when it comes to kukris, man, I prefer a nicer quality one. Um, I think that the kukri is a much better option than a standard machete. And I really like this Condor K-Tac one. It does come with such a really awesome beautiful tactical sheet that can be mounted in so many different ways um it's not overly heavy it's not overly built like the nepalese ones are that i showed you earlier uh it's just kind of lightweight but it's solid it's very very solid you can do a lot of work with it i processed a ton of firewood with it earlier it did really good you can feather stick with it you can debark stuff you can throw it up against a tree if you want and you're good at that stuff i'm still working on my throwing skills and everything but just an overall really cool blade and one of the things that I'd like to say about this blade that really makes it different than some of the other kukris, one, it is rounded out on the end, so it doesn't have that tendency to slip out. It's got a little bit of a choke point, but also it does just have that big basher on the end. So you don't really have to worry about damaging the bottle, the bottom of the handle or anything else breaking apart on you. And it makes it a really phenomenal blade, man. Thank you guys. My brothers, I was reading today and uh, I read something I read before, but it just really stood out to me today. And I wanted to share this with you guys. This is from Matthew 25. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you took care of me. And I was in prison, and you visited me. Man, what powerful words, right? How often do we look 
at somebody else and we judge them or we, we drive past them on the street corner and we don't offer them any help. How many times has a lady at a gas station asked you for a couple bucks and you don't do nothing for her? Man, when I think about this and all the times that I've I've passed over those people or maybe I look at those people and I judge them and I say, ah, you know, uh, get over it. I, I was there once, right? Maybe you had humble beginnings and you made something of yourself and you look down on those folks now because you think that you're better, right? That you've made it and that they should be able to do that too. Well, I say to you, man, this next line hits you hard. Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. So guys, you know, do right by everybody that you can, help everybody that you can because that is our reward, right? We will be rewarded. We will be taken care of for showing love to others. <laughs> I love you, brothers, man. I hope you all continue to join me on this wonderful journey of, of knives and the word, brothers. <laughs>